done is I've written these out so that we don't have to spend so much time writing. I hope I've written them out. Maybe I didn't write that first one. Let's talk about this first problem. The first one problem says, this is 9.7, and I'm not going to do any lecture on this because you've already learned how to do these problems. We're just converting them from doing the words into doing the problems. It says in 2012, the population of a city was 6.54 million. I hear a baby. The exponential growth rate was 2.63% per year. All right, A is find the growth function. And they don't give you this, so you have to go online and look under that section that says formulas for college algebra. Now you can write this down as you do this one and you'll have it for these problems for your homework, but it's nice to have this little thing handy. You're looking for the growth function for population growth. It's right here. P of T equals P sub zero times E to the KT. So I'm going to write it down for you on this problem so you'll have it. And it's the growth, population growth. All right, so P sub zero is the initial population. The K is the rate in decimals. So our rate was 2.63%. What would that be in decimals? Anybody know? 0 0.263. 0 0.0263. You've got to move the decimal point two places to the left. So it's 0 0.0263. That's going to be our K. And our initial population was 6.54 million. So our formula for this problem all the way through is going to be 6.54 e to the point zero two six three times the number of years that they tell us. Now remember our initial starting time was 2012 and the initial population is 6.54. So we're going to need to use our 2012 but this is the answer for the A part. Now, I went into the system to see what you were going to have to do to get this in. You have to, you know how they have that list of things down here across the bottom. They'll have one that was like this. They have one that was like this. And then down over here, they have more. You know what I'm talking about? They have those lists of all those things down there. And then they have a more here. To get this E, you're going to have to go into more and find the little cursive E on your keyboard that's there. Because it's, it's like I, it's a cursive E. So you'll have to go under more to get this E. Everybody okay with that? If you just type E on your keyboard after you put the number in, it'll uh, do it itself. Will it? Yes. Okay. If it will, you're good. If it won't, you'll have to get this cursive E off of here. I hadn't tried it with the regular E. I didn't think it would do it. Well, good. If it'll do it, that saves you some time. 
Okay, then let's look at B. B says estimate the population in 2018. Okay, well this started in 2012 and we want in 2018. So to get our T, we're going to have to take our 2018 and subtract our 2012 to see how many years we're talking about. So how many years will we be talking about for this one? Six. 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 So that's going to be our T. So now our problem is going to say P of T or P of 6 equals 6.54 E to the point 0 0.0263 times 6. See if you can get that in your calculator and see if you come up with the number 7.7. .7. It says round to one decimal place. See if you can put 6.54 e to the 0 0.0263 times 6 in your calculator and get 7.7. .7. Did you get it? I'm still writing this. Oh, okay. I got 7.657. You got 7.657. They want one decimal place. So they want that place right there. So because this is a five, you round this six to a seven. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Seven point six five seven is right. You just have to round it to one decimal place. All of this is on lecture notes, correct? Yes. It's already out there. Okay. Let's okay, thank you. do C on this one. This one has a C part. The C part is when will the population be 10 million? So in this particular problem, we're still using our basic one that we came up with, our 6.54 E to the 2.0, uh, zero, sorry, 0 0.0263 T. That's what we're still using. But this time we know what number should go over here. It should be 10 million. We we're going to kind of find the time, how long it's going to take us to get to 10 million is what we're going to do. Okay. Now, there's several ways to do this. I found out that this is probably the easiest way. I want to try to isolate as much of as I can over here before I start trying to um, L in both sides is what I've got to do in a minute. So I'm going to get rid of the 6.54, which is that coefficient in the front. I'm going to get rid of it. So it cancels it out of there. And 10 divided by 6.54, and this is what drives you crazy. You have to leave a lot of decimals in here so that you don't lose the decimal on the end. So I have 1.529052 when I divide 10 by 6.54. Okay, now then, this is the step where you want to LN both sides. So I'm going to LN this side. And I'm going to LN this side. And that's what I get. Okay, now I hope you're ahead of me and you know what to do. I'm going to move this to the front because it's an exponent. So I have ln 1.529052 equals 0 0.0263 tlne. 
moves it to the front of that LNE. Now, what is LNE? One. One. So that's going to go away. And I just have this number times T. Then I'm going to divide by both signs. That would cancel that. And if I can get this in my calculator correctly, I should have the answer. 16.1. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Who said that? Austinica. Thank you, Austinica. That's great. All right, 16.1 is your T. So it says, when will the population be 10 million? If 16.1 is your T, that doesn't tell me when it will be 16 million. I need to do what to say what year it will be for it to be 16 million, I mean 10 million. If it's 16 years, where did we start from? 2012. We started at 2012. And don't add the point one. you just need the years, 16. So in what year will it be 10 million? Twenty-eight. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. All right. There's a D part to this one. The D part says find the doubling time. Doubling is when you're going to double your population. And there's a whole different formula for it. It's T equals LN2 over R. And R is the same thing as K. It's the rate. They just use R in the T for some reason. I guess because different people in different books use different things. So what we've really got is LN2 over 0 0.0263. We already know our rate. So if you can get this in your calculator, see if you get 26.4. Yeah, did anybody get it? Yes. Okay, LN2 divided by 0 0.0263, okay? All right, any questions on that problem? So the answer they want, we would go back and add that to the 2012 too, correct? No, 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 no. The doubling time is how many years. They ask how many years on this one. I think it's a different question, not when. Okay, just I think it sure. says different, how many years will it be. Can you leave that up for a second, Dr. Smallman, please? I sure will. Thank you. And all of those formulas, guys, are found on that formula sheet. But I've, I'll write them down for each one of these problems as we go so you'll have them. Okay. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Let's go to number two. Number two, I did remember to write it out. It says complete the table. That's what it says. Complete the table. And it gives us country A and country B, and it has a doubling time and it has a growth rate. And all it says, oh, it tells us to round the doubling to the nearest whole number and the growth rate to the nearest tenth. It does tell us that. All right, so this is what they gave us. So let's do this first one and do find the doubling time. So the doubling time for this country A would be T equals LN2 over, what is 2.1? as a decimal. 
Zero two one is what I need to use. So someone put in your calculator and tell me what that answer ends up being. And they say round it to the nearest whole number. Thirty three. Thirty three. Did everybody get thirty three? So that would go in that box. Okay, for country B. They tell us that the doubling time is 58, so that goes in where the T is, and I'm LN2 over, in this case, they use an R. Anybody know how I would solve that problem? How about if I multiply both sides by R? So I'll have 58R equals LN2 because these R's would cancel. And now I can divide both sides by 58 to get R. So somebody do LN2 divided by 58 and tell me what percent, I know what number you get. And it'll be, I don't know what it'll be. Let's look at it. Ellen 2 divided by 58. Yep, it's 0 0.01195. Right? So what rate did you put? 1.2%. 1 1 okay. Everybody okay with that problem? All right, let's look at number three. I'm sorry, I accidentally didn't mute. I un forgot to unmute. So you did the LN2 over 58. Right. And I got this number. Right. Which converts to a percent as 1.2. Because I have to move the decimal the other way, two places. Okay. Okay. If you have to get the percent, right? Yes. Okay, I thought so. In fact, I probably should write that in there. 1.2 goes right there. Okay. All right, number three. Suppose 18,038 is invested at an interest rate of 6.3%. Compounded continuously. Okay, compounded continuously is a whole new lovely ball game there. We have to find the exponential function. So I grab my little sheet and I look at the one that says compounded continuously, which is continuous compounded formula. So it says P of T equals P sub zero E to the K T. That's compounded continuously formula. All right, now they want us to fill in the numbers that we have so far. So my P sub zero is gonna be this 18,038. And my E is in the formula. I can figure out my K because they gave me 6.3%. So what would that be as a decimal? Point zero six three. Point zero six three. So 0 0.063 T. So that's the answer for the A part. The B part is the balance after one year to two decimal places. So I do P of T equals 18,038 E to the 0.063 times one. 
Somebody put that in the calculator and see what it is to two decimal places. Nineteen thousand two hundred and ten point nine five. Okay, did everybody else get that? All right, so let's do some others. We're going to do one after five years, one after ten years, and one that's doubled. I don't know if that's the E or not, but it's doubling. Okay, and remember on doubling, we're using T equals LN2 over 0 0.063 because that's our amount. So somebody, let me see. Astonika, would you do the five-year one and tell me how much it is? And let's see. Chandra, can you do the 10-year one? Okay. And what we're doing is putting the 5 in for T for the 5-year one and the 10-year one, you're putting 10 in for T. And let me get somebody. Luke, are you still on? How about Corey? Corey, are you on? Dr. Sullivan, for you ready for the five year? Sure. Did you get it? Yes, it's two four seven one six point seven four. That's right. Do you want the doubling, Tom? Have you got it? It's 11. It's 11. Very good. Okay, and who was doing the 10? Was that you, Chandra? Oh, yeah. So Did I have um, 33,868 and uh, 339. So that's 34? Yeah. Okay. All right. You see how you do those? Okay, questions on that one. All right, let's look at four. Number four, you don't have to write all this down because you've got it. It says the data shows the percentage of adults in a country who are currently married is declining. Assuming that the percentage of adults who are married will continue to decrease according to the exponential decay model. This is the years. Use 1960 and 2012 to find K. All right, so that's what we're going to try to do. That's our data that we're using. The ones that are important are this 1960 because this is going to be our P sub zero in our problem. And our 2012 was 45.47. So those are the two we're going to use. And we're going to find K to do that. So if I use the formula P of T equals P sub zero E to the negative K T. And this is different from the one that I had on the growth the growth was a positive kt because they were it was growing this one is declining so you use a negative kt this is a population decay if it's going down it has to be a negative kt and you put the numbers in that you know for the 2012. So 45.7 would go in over here. My initial population was 70.6. 
my E's in my formula. I'm going to find my K, but I've got to figure out what T is. So if I start with 2012 and I subtract 1960, how many years would I get in there? 52. 52. So I'm using 52 as my T. Okay, now this is like that when I did a while ago. You want to divide both sides by 70 first. 70.6. And you get 0. 0.64730878197 equals e to the negative k times 52. Okay, now then. I'm going to ln both sides. So ln 0 0.64730878197, notice how I kept all those decimals, equals ln e to the negative 52k. I'm going to put that 52 in the front. Now I'm going to keep it and I'm going to bring that exponent to the front using that power rule negative 52k and ln e is going to go away because it's a 1 and divide both sides by negative 52 and I should get k. I got 0 0.008364 and they want four decimals so I got 0 0.0084. Okay, there's my K. Now the negative is in the formula, so when you stick this in the formula, it will have the negative in front of it still. Okay. Okay, anybody have a problem finding K? First of all, we put in our information, our piece of zero, divided it out to 70.6, took the L in of both sides, brought the 52K in front, divided by negative 52, and I got K. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so I'm going to write down on this next page the formula using that for K that we want to use for this problem. P of T equals P sub zero E to the negative KT. And this time I'm going to fill in the P sub zero is 70.6 E negative uh, 0 0.0084 T. And now I can do it for whatever time they want me to do it for. Okay. So this says, to find the formula, then it says to estimate the percent of adults who are married in 2015 and 2018. So we've got to figure out those. We started with 1960. So 2015 minus 1960 is how much, while we're at it, we'll do the other one too. 2018 minus 1960. Has anybody done that? How much is 2015 from 19, 1960? 55 and 58. 55 and 58. Those are our two times we're going to do for these two problems.
So the first problem is going to be 55. So it's going to be P of T equals 70.6 E to the negative 0 0.0084 times 55. Someone do that. Brooke, do you have your calculator and you can do that one? I do. All right, let's do the 18 while we're, I mean the 58 while we're at it. 70.6 E to the negative 0 0.0084 times 58. Portia, do you have your calculator with you? How about Natalie? Maybe there's nobody online. Erica, are you online? Yes, I'm here. Can you do that one? Uh-huh. Okay, tell me what you get. Uh, just one second. Okay. Uh, 43.37. 43, and it says to one decimal place. Oh, one, uh, so 43.4. Uh-huh. Okay, do we have the other one? Was it Brooke that was doing the other one? Sorry, I've been talking to myself. 44.5. Oh, 44.5? Mm, yes, that's right. Okay, these must be too easy for you guys. Let's um, try at first, I didn't get it, so we rounded it, right? Yes. Because I thought we did a different number. Uh, I guess, okay. Did you get those two numbers? A three. Um, wait, 80. That's zero zero eight four. Okay, I will in a second because I didn't round it up. That's oh, okay. All right. It says for the C part, when will the percent be thirty four percent? So how do we do that? We want to know when it's going to be 34%. What do we do with the 34? Okay, mine, for some reason, I don't. I didn't get 44. I got an error. You did? Yes. So what'd you put in? Okay, so I did 70.6. 70.6. Second, second in the E. Okay, second and E, and it already puts it up there in a the little box. Right, and so I did... Did the negative down by the decimal point. Right. Negative 0. 0. 0.0084, and then the time symbol, 55. 44.4795. Uh -huh. Okay, maybe I did something wrong, but it was giving me an error. But... Did you okay. get it that time? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. This time you put the 34 in on this side, and this is where we do that dividing, guys. You're going to find out the T because it's going to tell us when it's going to get to be 34. So divide both sides by 70.6. And let me see what we got. I think I've got point zero. No, I've got zero point. Zero point. Four eight one five eight six four zero oh, two three equals e to the negative zero point zero zero eight four t. Then you l in both sides. Remember, the hardest part about this is rewriting all this. Then you bring that out in front, so you'll have T times that, well, I have a negative 0 0.0084 T ln E, and ln E goes away, and it's the ln of this other side. Now then, what do you do to get T? Divide by negative. Yeah, divide by this negative 0 0.0084. Now 
And so what do we get for our time? Anyone get 86.98? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm still writing this down. It says when. It doesn't say how many years. So if it says when, it wants the year, the date. So I need to change this to 87 years. Now look back and tell me what was our initial year on this. 1960. 1960. So if we add 87 years, what would we get? 2047. 2047. Okie dokie. I'm still writing this down. This is a lot. Okay. Eight. On these problems, I always kind of make sure it's making sense. If you're that's what I'm a, trying to do. Like if you're you getting a down. T, make sure it looks like it would be that number of years. So after, so I got a question. It says, when will the percentage be 34%? So once we did all, once we came up with the 0 0.481, the big long number, we just basically L, N, E, both sides, right? That's right. L, N, both sides. And when you do L, when you get L, N, E over here, it cancels out and makes one. But you have brought this exponent to the front before you do that. So it's this exponent that was in the front times L and E, and then this L and E goes to one. So then you're dividing by this number that's in front of T. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, let's look at this one. This is a farm. These are farms. These are based on real things too. You know, before we got went to uh, to the computer where they changed the numbers every time, then we did real stats from real places for real farms, and it was kind of interesting to watch. Think there was one that was on about Branson and about how Branson, Missouri had so much many problems because their population increased so rapidly that they didn't have the in infrastructure to deal with the number of cars and the number of people that wanted to come to Branson. So it made it look like a real problem. But now since it's on the computer and they give you the same problem, it's gonna be a farm problem for number five but they're going to change the date and some information that's in it so that you can do it for any problem that's like that. So I think it kind of takes a little bit away from it when you're not talking about a specific place or specific time that it really did happen in life because those people in Branson had an awful time trying to figure out what they were going to do about the number of people that were suddenly coming to Branson to be entertained. So it was a big issue and it, so it ended up in all the math books for a while. Uh, this one says the number of farms in a certain state has declined continually since 1950. There's your start date. In 1950, there were 83,613 farms, and in 1995, that number had decreased to 28,164. Assuming the number of farms decreases according to the exponential model, find the value of k and write the exponential function. All right, so some things we need to know that in 1950, 
which is going to be our starting date. Our P sub 0 for this problem is going to be 83,613. Okay. And it's a decay problem. So I'm going to go, come over and grab my formula sheet and I'm going to do the one for exponential decay, which is P of T equals P sub 0 e to the negative kt because it's declining. Okay, it's going to be negative there. And 1950 was my start date. In 1995, the population had uh, decreased to, let me write this down, 1995 decreased to 28,164. So we need to know our value of K so we can do another problem that will be used for this particular set. So if I put my 28,164 in and my 83,613 in for P sub zero and I try to find my K, I need to know how much time passed between 1995 and 1950. So how many years would that be? 45. Mm -hmm. 45 years. So my T is 45. So if I solve this problem, I'll be able to come up with K. All right. Now the first step seems to be the hardest one every time. On this kind of problem, you want to divide both sides by the number that's over here because you're trying to reduce this down to get this K. So 83613 is what we're dividing by. And I think 83683757. you get 0.336837757 equals e to the negative k times 45. Now what do you do on this step? Once you get this long decimal over here, what is the next step that you do? L in both sides. You L in both sides. 336-83757 equals L in E to the negative 45 K. Okay. Then you bring your negative 45 K in front and your L in E is going to cancel. Then you divide by negative 45 and see what your K is going to be. What did you get? 0 0.024. Is that what you got? Yes, ma'am. So your formula is going to be P of T equals P sub zero E to the negative 0 0.024 times T. The negative is in the formula. Okay. I'm still writing that down. Okay. And on this one, I don't guess they ask him anything else. They just asked for K. So, okay, so K is the 0 0.24, okay. And it's really, it's going to be a negative value when you put it in your formula because it's a decay, so it's always right. negative if it's negative. Mm -hmm. P of T. So they didn't ask for anything else after that. That's it. All right, there's one more of these. Okay. Are you finished? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, let's look at this one. There are currently 57 million cars in a certain country, decreased by 5.1% annually. How many years will it take for this country to have 29 million cars round to the nearest year? Okay, this is pretty much the same thing. This is looks like it's decreasing in the number of cars, so I'm using P of T equals P sub 0 E to the negative KT. That's my decay one. And it looks like I'm going to use my 29 million here. It originally started with 57 million. And I've got my rate 5.1% is 0 0.051. And I have the negative in my formula. So if I solve that, I should get my answer. 57 was the initial one. 29 is what it ended up being. The 0.051 is by K, and I want to know how long. So I divide both sides by 57. I get 0.5087719 equals e to the negative 0 0.051t. So I L in both sides. Then I bring that decimal, that uh, exponent to the front. My ln e goes what? So I can get it if I just divide by negative 0 0.051. So somebody do it and tell me how long. It doesn't ask me for the year. It just says uh, how many how many years. So I just need to know t. Thirteen. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. Thirteen is right. Okay, now those are the six problems you'll be doing. They're all done the same way. The hardest part, I think, is remembering that you need to divide out this number over here to try to get this isolated. Maybe that's the hardest part. Any questions? Okay, this is the last section of our textbook that we are going to cover. It's 10.2. I hope that it will be easy for you. Okay, number one says, the produce manager orders 10 pounds of tomatoes, 50 pounds of zucchini, and 30 pounds of onions. Write a one by three row matrix. All right, so Finally a one by three means one row by three columns. That's what that means. And on your toolbox, on that toolbox, there'll be a little thing that looks like this. It'll have little dots in it like that. That's your matrix one that you want to pick. So you have to pick the matrix tool. It looks like that. And when you do that, it will say, it'll pop up this little thing, and it'll say rows, columns. And you'll have to type in one row and three columns. And then it will put this little thing in here that looks like this with three places for you to write in the numbers. So you pick the matrix tool. It'll pop this up, ask you for how many rows and how many columns. And I think there's already a two and two in there. Every time I did it, there was a two and two in there. So you change that to one and this to three, and it makes it, makes it look like that so that you can put in the numbers. So all you're gonna do is put in 10, 50, and 30. OK, 
Okay. All right. The B part says the following week, the manager increases the order by 10%. Increases by 10%. So how do we do 10% of each one of these? Does anyone know? Times it by point one zero. Yes, times it by 0 0.10 and then add it back. So the formula is x plus 0.10x. So put in your calculator 10 plus 0 0.10 times 10. And tell me what number you get. You can also times it by 1.10 and that already adds it for you. Yes, you can. You can because this is 1x, you can add these together. And you can do 1.10 and it'll get it automatically. You can add your X's together to start off with. So what's the answer is my question. 11. 11. So in the second one, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go to matrix tool. Tell it you want a one by three. It's going to pop this up. And number one, you're going to put in 11 because that's what 10% of 10 added back to 10 is. Okay, now do it for 50. What is 50 going to be? 55. 55. And what is 30 going to be? 33. 33. Okay, so there's the answer. The C is find A plus B. And you don't have to put these in your calculator to do this. You can do this in your head. These are easy enough to do in your head. Don't waste your time putting it in your calculator. But you're still going to have to put the matrix tool, do a one by three, rows one, three columns. It'll pop this up and you add these. What's 10 plus 11? 21. 21. What's 50 plus 55? 105. And what's 30 plus 33? 63. And the last question asks, what, do, do, what does A plus B represent? And your answer is the total. You're looking for the word total because you added them. The total orders for two weeks and this is a multiple choice thing and you're looking for the one that says total orders for the two weeks any question on that okay let's look at the second one the second one says it has all kinds of information on it it says a four ounce serving of roasted skinless chicken breast cost, contains 150 calories, 23 grams of protein, 4 grams of fat, 17 milligrams of calcium, 60 milligrams of sodium. Now that's that first one. It's roasted skinless chicken breast. The second one is one half cup of potato salad. This is potato salad. Contains 190 calories, 5 grams of protein, 15 grams of fat, 21 milligrams of calcium, and 663 milligrams of sodium. So there's your second one. One broccoli. So our third one is broccoli. And we have the same information for the broccoli. Same kind of information. The first matrix says to write a matrix for the chicken using a row matrix. So we got to figure out how many things we've got. One, two, three, four, five things. So when I pick my matrix thing right here, I want to do rows would be one, columns would be five, because we have five different things. So C is going to be 150, 23, 4, 17, 
60. That's my chicken. My potato salad, you're doing the same thing. It's going to ask you this, then it's going to say, do a one by five, put in the potato salad. So the potato salad is 190, 5, 15, 21, 663. What is that? So that's sodium? Gosh, it's a lot of salt. All right, so B is the broccoli. Broccoli ought to be pretty good here. 60, 7, 2, 84, and 23 of sodium. So you're doing this three different times. It'll ask you to make a, a matrix, a row matrix for each one of them. Then the B part is to find C plus 4P plus 4B. Okay, so let me get somebody to help me here. Um, Shandra, would you multiply P by 4, every one of these entries by 4? And I'll ask you for it in a minute. And Astonika, would you do four times the B? And I'm going to write, we don't do anything to the C, so I'm going to write the C down. And then I'll ask you for those others. Tell me when you get them. Okay. Okay, what'd you get? Um, 760. Okay. 20. Okay. 60. Okay. 34. Okay. 2652. Okay. So that was four times each one of these entries up here on P. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about, Estanika, did you have the B? 240. Okay. 240. 28. 28. 8. 8. 336. 336. 92. 92. Okay. Now let's do this addition here. What's the addition going to give us? We add all these together right here we're going to have 1150 I think is what that is 71 72 437 and 2804 okay now this line right here represents the total again you're looking for that word total total nutritional value for a four ounce piece of chicken, four half cup servings of potato salad, and four spears of broccoli. That's what this represents, the new total nutritional value. You're looking for the word total. Okay, questions on that problem? Anyone that needs to see more? Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one says that this is a manager in a large hospital that's concerned about maintaining reasonable food costs. The following table lists this cost per serving in cents for items that are on four different menus. On a particular day, a dietitian orders 64 meals from menu one, 49 meals from menu two, 92 meals from menu three, and 54 meals from mil, me, menu four. It says write the information as a four by five matrix M. So don't count your men, menus, just count the information. This would be one, two, three, four rows, one, two, three, four, five columns. So down there, you're gonna need to pick the little thing that says matrix, and then you're going to have to say four rows and five columns. And it's going to say M equals, and it's going to open up a big matrix thing 
like that with little places along every one of them for you to write in those numbers. Five, twelve point three, forty-six point one, seven point eight, twelve point five, eight point two, nine point nine, fifty-one point six, seven point one, eleven point eight, nine point one, ten point nine. So in your uh, in your on your screen, it's going to give you all of that. You write it in, and you'll hit enter, and it will tell you if it's correct. Okay. Then it says for n, write a row n that represents the number of meals ordered. And it tells you that you want a one by four. So how many meals were ordered? 64, 49, 92, and 54. So this looks like 64, 49, 92 and 54. Okay, and it'll give you a spot to put that. You do need to know that this is a 4 by 5 and this is a 1 by 4. Now they're going to ask you to multiply n times n. m. And I can tell you that when you're multiplying, n has a 1 by 4, and m is a 4 by 5. If you're multiplying two matrices together, these two in the middle have to match, or you can't multiply them. And these two on the end is what you're going to get for your answer. Your answer is going to be a 1 by 5. So that's just some added information that you'll need to know. Now, since this is such a big matrix, and since I don't want to teach you all these rows and column multiplication, I want you to grab your calculator and see if you can remember how we entered matrices in our calculator. Does anybody remember? You press second x to the negative one. Yeah, you and you get this, and you get this thing that says matrix thing. Remember seeing it? Okay, now we have A and B, so we're going to enter them as M and N. Okay, so let's go over to edit. And we're going to enter on A, and A is going to be M for our purposes. So we need for M to be a 4 by 5. You can see I've already been playing with this one. Okay, everybody with me? Remember at first we had to enter our rows by columns. Now you put in these elements, 45.1, enter, 6.9, enter, 10.7, enter, and do every one of them. I'm going to already get out of it because I've already entered all of mine. Let me know when some somebody gets finished with entering. y'all working on it there's a lot of entries to get it in all in there okay 
Okay. Now let's go to second matrix over to edit and down to B. And B is going to be our N because we wrote it down second. It's a 1 by 4. So enter 1 and 4. Put in 64, enter 49, enter 92, enter and 54, enter and second quit to get out of it, remember. Now I want to multiply N times M. In my case, that's going to be B times A because I've entered them as those values. So I do matrix down, wait, sorry, let me get out of this second matrix down to B and then I do second matrix and A and it says multiply B times A which is what I want and I hit enter and I get these numbers 1 2 5 5 5 point 1 one seven four three point five and see how the arrow says to go over if you move your arrow over you'll be able to see the others two oh six nine point nine did i put my two nine two seven in i think i skipped one yeah i did let me start over here I'm going to run out of room anyway. 12555.1, and 2622.5, which is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is a 1 by 5. Okay, so I got a question because I kind of forgot. I just step away for a second. So I'm doing second, then uh, to get this up here. Yeah, second and that matrix thing. Second and matrix. Right. Go down to B first because you want N times M, so it's B times A. Okay. So enter B first, and it puts a B up there. See, so don't hit it again, or it'll give you all those numbers. Okay. Then do second in matrix, and this time you want A. So it's going to say it's going to multiply B times A, which is what you want it to do. And it gives you all those numbers. Now you can see those first ones, 12555.1, 1743.5. But you can't see the others, but see this arrow here says you can arrow over, and it'll give you the other numbers. Okay, I see. 2069.9, 2622.5, there's one in front of it, 2927.7. See if you error over, it'll give it'll give you the others. So this is what you should have. And then it says, what did this does it mean? It means the total, you're looking for that word total again, the total cost of each food for the day. It's the total cost of each food for the day. That one day they ordered 64 of one kind, 49 of another, 92 of another, and 54 from menu four. So that's the total cost of the food for that one day. Okay, questions on that? Okay, there's one more. Let's try to get it done. And then we'll be done tonight. We won't do the support quiz until Thursday. It's pretty easy. If you want to go in and do it, you can. But we'll do it on Thursday. It says the table shows the number of each type of cookie and dozens that Karen sold in one week to two coffee shops. She sold two chocolate chip to Muggies and seven to the coffee club, eight oatmeal and nine to the of oatmeal to the uh, Muggsies and nine to the coffee club and five to Muggsies and 12 to coffee club of peanut butter. She wants to make 
one dozen cookies and the cost for them is three dollars for the chocolate chip, three fifty for the oatmeal, and two fifty for the peanut butter. So then it says write the information in the table as a three by two matrix. So and call it S. So that would be two, seven, eight, nine, five, and twelve. Then it says, rep, this is for the uh, cookies. Then it says, do C for the cost. And it tells you to do a one by three. This one was a three by two. Then it says to do a one by three for the cost. So $3, you don't have to put the zeros, the two zeros. You can just put these as decimal numbers here. So I've got three dollars for the chocolate chip, three fifty for the oatmeal, and two fifty for the peanut butter. Okay, then they want you to find the product CS. Okay, so let's see if we can put this in our calculator. Let's see if we can remember how to do it. Second matrix over to edit, and you can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my S in for the A like I did before, but this is a 3 by 2, so I'm going to do 2, 7, 8, 9, 5, 12. Then second and quit. Then go over to edit and down to B to put in your C, and your C is a 1 by 3. And it's 3, 3.5, 2.5. Now I want to multiply CS. So I put them in as A here and B here. So again, I want to do B times A. So I'm going to do second matrix, go down to B, enter. Second matrix, A, enter. So I have. 46.2 and 82.5. And I only have a 1 by 2. Let's see if that's right. A 1 by 3 times a 3 by 2. The two middle ones match. So I should end up with a 1 by 2 matrix. And I did. Again, it's the total cost of the ingredients. what you're looking for those words total cost okay any questions on how to enter those into your calculator or how to multiply them or how to get the answers no, you got 46.5.